All right, 8 one warm up is covering arithmetic sequences. So we talked about an arithmetic sequence being one in which the change in the consecutive numbers is the same. So you're either increasing or decreasing by the same amount. Number one says to determine whether or not the sequence is arithmetic, and if it is, find the common difference. So from 5 to 3 to 1 to negative 1 to negative 3, is there the same change by adding or subtracting a number? Yes. What is that number? Negative 2. So this would be yes, this is an arithmetic um, sequence, and D, which is your common difference, is negative 2. Number 2 says write the first five terms of the arithmetic sequence. We said there were two ways to do this. One is to come up with a formula for a sub n, and then plug in 1, 2, or not 1 because I give you 1, but 2, 3, 4, and 5. Or you could just take that first term, which is probably easier, and continually to change it by adding on whatever D is until you get to the fifth term. So if I add 3, so the first term would be 8, then the, the second term would be 8 plus 3, which is 11, 11 plus 3, which is 14, 14 plus 3, which is 17, and 17 plus 3, which is 20. Those are the first five terms. Again, make sure you include that first term in your five terms. It's just like in section 1, we have to make sure if that we're given a sub 1 that that is part of the first five terms. Number three says find the formula for, um, this should be a sub n, for the arithmetic sequence and then find the sum of the first 25 terms of the sequence. So if I'm using, and it's a for, for number two, so find the formula for that one would be a sub n equals a sub one plus d times n minus one. And then I have a sub one, that's eight, d, which is positive three, n minus one, that's eight plus three n minus 3 or 5 plus 3n. That's your a sub n. That's the first part. Then it says find the sum of the first 25 terms in the sequence. So now we're talking about the sum and the partial sum is equal to n over 2, the number of terms divided by 2, times the first term plus the last term. So the number of terms, first 25 terms in the sequence tells you that the n is 25. The first term was given to us, that was 8. The last term would be a sub 25. So a 25 would be 5 plus 3 times 25, 5 plus 75, which is 80. So then I get 12.5 times 88. That's 16, that's 20, that's 10, that's 40 again, that's 16 plus 10 again, that's 20. Oh. And then there's one decimal place. So the sum is 1,100. For the first 25 terms of the sequence. Question so far. Okay, four says find the sum of the first 50 positive multiples of five. So I know n, right? Well, first of all, let's write out the equation again. n over two times first plus last. It says the first 50 positive multiples of five. So what would be my number of terms? 50, right? It's 50 positive multiples of five. So you want 50. You're saying after you divide by two. The first multiple of five is what? Five. Five, okay. Then the last. So I want to know what the 50th multiple of five is. Do you want to sit here and count 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way to the 50th multiple? No. So if it's a multiple of five and the first one is five, what would D be? It would be 5, then it would be 10, then it would be 15, then it would be 20, and so on and so forth, right? What is D? Positive 5. So I can say A sub N equals 5 plus 5 times N minus 1. And I want the 50th one. So I can say A sub 50 equals 5 plus 5 times 50 minus 1. 5 plus 5 times 49 which is 250. Okay, I could have also taken that 5 and multiplied it times the 50 because that's how many terms there would have been in there. 
So then from here, I'd get 25 times 255 and 255 times 25. is 6,375. And then the last one says find the partial sum. So now we're writing in terms of sigma or in terms of, sum, terms of summation notation. It's still n over 2 times first plus last. But this time I got to figure out the first and the last and the number of terms. If, we, if the number on the, one, on the bottom was 1, what did we say the n was? The number on the top. So this time it's 10. Okay, and then I need to find if n is 1. So if n equals 1, then it's 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. That's my first. And then I need to find where n is 10. So 2 times 10 minus 3 is 20 minus 3, which is 17. And that's the last. So I'd get 5 times 16, which is 80. Questions on arithmetic. So obviously we talked about arithmetic being where the difference is the same. You're adding or subtracting the two equations you learned in arithmetic where a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. That gives you the equation. And then we learned that the sum equals n over 2 times first plus last. And that the n was equal to the number on the top if the n on the bottom is 1. If the n was 0, we'd be adding to the number on the top. If the number was bigger than 1, we'd be subtracting from the number at the top. So those adjustments can be made. Questions on the homework for A2? Will? Can you tell me what it says? Uh, the sum of the integers from negative 40 to 50. Negative 40 to 50? Okay, so how many terms are there, right? From negative 40 to 50, there'd be 90, right? That's your N. The first one's negative 40, the last one's 50. So then I'd get 45 times 10, which is 450. From 40 to 50. So from negative 40 to, to 0 would be 40, and then from 1 to 50 would be 50. Okay, but it didn't look like that. It looked like 90. I was thinking 90, but I did it like that. I had to add an extra one. Like so let's say 0 minus a negative 40. Oh, I got you, I got you, I got you. So to ne up to negative 1, so you do have to add the 1 in because you're going up to 0 and then adding in the 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's 91 terms instead of 90. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then it's 45.5 times 10, which is 455. Okay, we're just going to get a start on 8.3. So 8.3 continues with geometric sequence and series. I mean, sorry, with se sequence and series. The it was spe what's special about 8.3 is we're going to talk about geometric ones. So in 8.1, you had your general sequence and series and summation. In 8.2, we focused on just arithmetic, which means you're adding or subtracting the same number in sequential order. And then in 8.3, we're going to talk about geometric. And geometric is when the ratio of consecutive numbers are the same, meaning you would multiply or divide, really, because you could use a reciprocal, by the same number. So arithmetic, you're adding. Geometric, you're multiplying. So if you've got a set of numbers and you want to know if it's geometric, okay, then you would take A2 divided by A1, take A3 divided by A2, take A4 divided by A3, and if they are all the same, then it's a geometric sequence. With arithmetic, we said the change was D for common difference. With geometric, we use R for common ratio. So 
So same type of examples as from 8.2. It says determine whether or not the sequence is geometric. So you're going to get a series. This time I have four numbers. And I want to check to make sure that when I divide 12 by 3, I would get the same thing as if I divide 48 by 12 and 192 by 48. So 12 over 3, 48 over 12, and 192 over 48. What's 12 divided by 3? 4. What's 8 divided by 12? I mean, sorry, 48 divided by 12. 4. 192 divided by 48? 4. So because these are all the same, this is geometric. And R, which is your common ratio, is 4. Now look at B. I go from 1 to 1 half to 1 third to 1 fourth. So I would say is 1 half divided by 1 the same as 1 third divided by 1 half, the same as 1 fourth divided by 1 third. So 1 half divided by 1, hopefully that's easy, that's 1 half. 1 third divided by 1 half is the same thing as times 2 over 1. Is that 1 half? No, I don't even need to continue. As soon as I get one that doesn't match, this is not geometric. If that one was one half, but then the one fourth divided by the one third was not, it's still no. If any one in the series doesn't work, it's no. And be careful because they sometimes will give you like the first two work, but the third one doesn't. So you want to make sure you're testing them all out. Questions so far? All right, this one says, write the first five terms of the geometric sequence. So in a moment, we're going to learn how to find an equation for a sub n, but we don't need that yet, right? If the first term is 1 and r is 1 half, what do I do to get term 2? Multiply by 1 half. So 1 times 1 half is 1 half. That means my first term is 1, my second one is 1 half. And then I multiply by 1 half again, and I get 1 fourth. Third term is 1 fourth. Multiply by 1 half again, and I get 1 eighth. Fourth term is 1 eighth. Multiply by 1 half again, and I get 1 sixteenth. First five terms always starts with the one they gave you. Questions on that one? Finding the nth term. So just like we had an equation for finding the nth term if it's arithmetic, we now have an equation to find the nth term if it's geometric. And that is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So for this, you need to know a sub 1, and you need to know the common ratio. So example three says write the first five terms of the geometric sequence, find the common ratio, and then write the nth term of the sequence as a function of n. So this time it's recursive to begin with, but it wants us to use that to get the first five terms. So if I'm taking nine and multiplying it by two, then a sub two is 18. Take 18 and multiply it times two, a sub three is 36. Take 36 and multiply it times 2, and a, is, a sub 4 is 72. Take 72 and multiply it times 2, and a sub 5 is 144. So first five terms of the sequence would be 9, 18, 36, 72, and 144. And then it says find the common ratio. So what am I multiplying 9 by to get to 18, 18 by to get to 36, 36 is 72, and 72 to 144? 2. R is 2. And then it says write the nth term of a sequence as a function of n. So my equation is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. a sub n would equal a sub 1, which is 9, r, which is 2, to the n minus 1. 
and you're going to leave it like this. Do not multiply 9 and 2. That is wrong. 2 is the only one that gets that exponent. So you cannot make that 18 and minus 1. Questions on that one? All right, example four. Find the formula for the nth term of the geometric sequence, then find the indicated term of the geometric sequence. So it's giving you 336 and 432, and it wants you to find the seventh term. So for my nth term, I need a sub 1, I need r. Do you know a sub 1? It's 3. Do you know r? Not yet, but you figure it out, right? What do I, what's 36 divided by 3? 12. So then r is 12. N minus 1 is my equation. And then it says, find the seventh term. So a sub 7 would be 3 to the 12. 7 minus 1, 3, 12 to the 6. This is not something I expect you to multiply out. If there were smaller numbers, so if I give you your quiz without a calculator, there'll be smaller numbers that you could do, like 2 to the 6 or something like that. 12 to the 6, I'm not expecting you to work out. That's uh, 200, no, 2,985,984. And then I multiply that times 3. So it said find a formula. Here's my formula. And then find a sub 7. There's a 7. Questions so far?